Good morning, folks. Eyes in the Bay of Bengal as the cyclone strengthens and the subcontinent comes into the crosshairs. Minor evacuation should be considered if not already underway. Alessa hit Australia. Remnants continue to drop moisture across a wider area. There are numerous flood threats in the northern parts of the country, including the northeast. Rainfall over South America has been torrential at times. Got the flood risks in numerous locations here, especially with the accumulation. Looking at Africa as well, the accumulation swath is easily discernible. Isolated spotty flood threats here are spread across that swath. Major rain in the southwest U.S. moved over Texas and just east where it was already pouring badly. Last bit of flood threats there. Bartol Network showing muon density dropping. It's a lowering of the cosmic rays. 24 boring hours of solar wind, so let's pull up three days. You can see a drop off in density, speed, and plasma temperature, orange, yellow, and green, respectively. No geomagnetic instability, and the sensitive electron flux is very calm. Solar flaring on the GOES X ray flux declining from weak solar max to someone please remind our star at showtime. Let's say ISON were to induce flaring during perihelion. There's nothing even on the Earth-facing disk that could fire a strong M-flare at the moment, much less an X-flare or an X-10. The complexity and size combination just isn't there yet, with ice on show starting in three days. Most of you know that we've entered a quake watch. Part is the doubly relevant planetary geometry, Saturn, conjoining Mercury and Venus, opposing Jupiter. But the majority of this is about the solar magnetic force. We saw slight power development in the northern opening last night, and per yesterday's news, that opening is still affecting Earth today. The blocking umbral and coronal magnetic fields appear to open towards the equator, and in addition to being able to see that part in the blocking fields coming to Earth, you should notice the general macro-level gyration and instability of the fields. Highly dynamic. You can see that field instability also when you eliminate all but the ecliptic plane fields, you see the snapping yellow line down south. Last night, I showed how all five moderate Iran-Iraq tremors in the month of November occurred in the last three days. It's a very significant indication of the uptick we were already expecting with the quake watch. Luckily though, after central Turkey shook for a second, the pressure moved south along that fault line to the triple junction in the Indian Ocean, and that shifted the instability back to the Scotia Sea and South Atlantic Ocean for the second seven-pointer there this month. We are also beginning an uptick in the Northwest Pacific, and even with that showing on the USGS, it is not representative of the six magnitude power indicated on the global list. Quick note, I've been adding new polls every few days. I do appreciate when you guys come here and give your opinion. It truly helps everyone when you share your mind. And especially for those new viewers, the climate series and all the background videos needed to get on the same page are compiled into nice playlists here for easy viewing without having to click around or search for them. I'll leave you with an incoming monster filament, some shots of 11899 from Iris, and other shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.